จะเอาเอาของรูปละมาด้วยออก Hi in this video I'm going to show you my workflow using 3D Maker Pro Eco LiDAR Scanner My customer Marine Department Authority of Thailand they request me to make a canopy between these two buildings so I will use the 3D scan data from this scanner to make a conceptual design of the canopy years before I don't have a LiDAR scanner what I do is I will use the total station to probe the point between the old buildings and the new buildings and create a 3D model and design a new canopy over it I would have to spend like half of my day just to uh, make a survey using the total station for the project this size but with the LiDAR scanner it can uh, capture all the data that I need in less than 5 minutes and I also can use the color point cloud for presentation without me having to model the existing building okay now it's finished and I'm completing the loop and I can say that most engineers they never seen a LiDAR scanner before so this is a still new technology okay, next I'm going to transfer the files into the SSD drive uh, this is Ray Studio. Select the folder. Uh, next, I'm going to process with the non color uh, version of the Point Cloud. Kind of mix between indoor and outdoor. It has more indoor than outdoor. Uh, Point Cloud filtering, Point Cloud thinning. Okay, let's start the process. Okay, for the non color version, the process takes about 8 minutes. So, this is the non color version of the Point Cloud. Okay, let me uh, check the trajectories. Uh, this is the trajectories that I walk during the scan. So if I measure the distance between these two groups, uh, the spacing is only uh, 6 mm. Okay, and next I'm going to uh, move to the colorized point cloud. Okay, the color point cloud takes 6 minutes to process 2 minutes faster than the non-color version So let me check the trajectories This is the trajectory which is um, very close Let me check the first frame and the last frame Frame. This is the floor that I uh, placed the scanner on You can see that the green and the red color match I don't think there is any uh, drifting in the rotation and translation Okay, this is cloud compare and I will drop the non-color version of the file name will be called process result and the file type is LAS file format The non-color version of the point cloud is suitable for doing the reverse engineering for the ego It will have a, a less noise and higher point cloud density and when comparing with the color one uh, this is the color version just drag and drop here Okay, you can turn on and off uh, Color version has a lower density of the point cloud and higher noise I will use the color version for presentation purpose only For the non-color version, I'm going to use it for reverse engineering For the non-color version, I have uh, 28 million point clouds And for the color version, I have uh, 10 million point clouds Which is uh, half the number of the non-color version Okay, next I'm going to crop uh, both point cloud together so it has it will have a approximate the same size of the area. Let me uh, using the scissor tools to crop it. I think I go from here to here. Uh, click here, segment in, and delete the less of the data. And next I'm going to cut some of the floor out. I'm um, going to use segment out, click on delete So now the uh, color and the non-color version we have uh, the same area uh, Next I'm going to check the alignment of the scan uh, If you check here, the column is in the vertical position I try to align it to the edge of my monitor 
and the floor, yeah, the floor is level. Uh, next, I'm going to clean up the the ghosting from the pedestrian movement. Click on here. Click on the bloom stick. Okay. And next, I'm going to uh, position the bloom stick and uh, use the height to 1.8 meters because the human height is somewhere around 1.8. And then I drag. See, all the lead color will be erased. So all you have to do is just moving the bloom stick. Uh, the shadow is gone. Let me move it here. Apply. Okay, next uh, I can click on validate. So now uh, you have a clean point cloud without any shadow from the moving object. Okay, this is how I clean the ghosting from the moving object. That it will uh, detect the floor and clean everything above it. Okay, now I'm going to click on both of the point cloud. I'm going to align it to the X axis by rotating it along the Z axis like this. Here, click on the check mark. Now the building is aligned. Okay, next I'm going to turn off the color point cloud and I'm going to change the color of the on color one to the bright green color because it has more contrast and I'm gonna need that when I trace in AutoCAD or the or the next winter. And if I check on the coordinates of the floor here and this point, it's gonna show 0 0.22 meters uh, negative. I want this point to be a zero level of the floor. So I going to uh, raise it up by 0 0.22 meters. Uh, all I have to do is click on both uh, color and the non-color. Click on here. Click on the check on the TC translation and translate it 0 0.22 forward. Click on check mark. Now uh, this point should be 0. Okay now it, the Z is at the 0 point. Okay, this is the color result of the point cloud. Uh, which is good for a uh, presentation, but if you want to use it for reverse engineering, you're gonna need to use the non-color version, which give a, a cleaner and denser point cloud. And this will be a non-color version. See, the number of the point cloud is denser. And you can clearly see the underside of the floor, which is uh, represent the position of the concrete beam that I need to use for designing the canopy. So by the way, I use EDL, uh, which uh, enhance the edges of the point cloud. And you can also render the point cloud using this function, uh, PCV. I usually like to use this on the non-color point cloud. Okay, this is the render view of the point cloud, the non-color version, uh, using the cloud compare. You can turn this on and off using the, the color tabs here, Scala, Fill, and RGB. So now the, the color point cloud and the non-color one, it has the same coordinate. So when I tracing in AutoCAD for structural member design, I will use the non-color version but when I uh, finish the drawing, I'm going to turn on the color version to represent the building so that I don't have to draw all this building. And I have to submit the drawing in the next two hours. So it's quite emergency. They contacted me yesterday and they want the drawing today. Uh, this is Autodex Recap. It's required for uh, Autodex product to be able to import the Poly Cloud. So I'm going to drop in the non-color version first. It's going to do an indexing of the point cloud that it will be more efficient for the software to uh, display millions of the point cloud on the viewport. It's compatible with the Autodex Winter uh, Rivet, the civil products from Autodex. You're going to need this. Okay. And next I'm going to import the color version. It's like a layer that you can turn on and off in, in your CAD software. Okay, now click on save and then you can close the recap. 
Okay, this is AutoCAD. I'm going to import the part cloud from the recap. Click on here, insert, attach, and open the RCP files. Insertion point is uh, 0, 0, 0, and the scale is 1. For the LiDAR scanner, scale is 1. Okay, now you have a non color version of the point cloud. You can click on the point cloud and change the point cloud size. Okay, this is one. Let me turn off the glitz. Okay, this is the point cloud. And if you want to turn on and turn off the color version, you can click on here, point cloud manager. You can turn on the color version. That's simple. But I'm going to use the non color version uh, because it has a better quality of the point cloud uh, for tracing. Okay, next I'm going to put the point cloud into the layer. Okay, now it's in this layer. And next I'm going to uh, clop the point clouds into a thin section. I want to draw a fixing point, make a new layer here. And I'm going to clop the point cloud using this tools, a uh, rectangular cut. Now the point cloud is cut into a, a thin section. Uh, next, I'm going to look at the position of the columns, this one, using three-point arcs. One, two, and three. The, the diameter will be like this. Okay, next, I'm going to do the same here. Uh, there's supposed to be a, a column behind this cladding. Call up this area. Okay, I'll just trace the center of the beam. If I measure this done here, it's a uh, it's 200 millimeter concrete beam. See here, if I measure the span of the beam from this point to this point, see here, it's 4989. It's about 10 millimeters, uh, less than 5 meters. So it's quite accurate, the scan result. You can actually use it for finding the fixing point location. Okay, now I have a problem. Um, the tall building side. The fixing point is lower, so the land water is going to flow back into this building. So what I'm going to do is, uh, it might have a water ponding, another 500, copy. Okay, next I'm going to uh, send this uh, 3D lines to the structural analysis software that I use for doing a process called form finding. It's going to create a 3D shape of the fabric using the a mathematical algorithm. Okay, this will be the model that I made from the structural software. All I have to do is just import the point cloud, insert an origin, click on OK. And if I click on the point cloud here, click on navigator, turn on the color version. Okay, so that's it. Uh, this is the drawing I made. In just less than one hour, I can get the presentation for the customer quick and easy. Uh, this canopy is 80 square meter. It should cost around 16,000 US dollar to make. Okay, now this is, will be uh, ready for presenting to the customer. So from the 3D scanning to uh, making a model and submission to the customer totally takes uh, less than three hours. The most time I spent was uh, riding the motorcycle to the job site and come back for the drawing. Here's another example. Uh, after the customer place order, I then make a shop drawing with a detailed structure like this over the point clouds. So this is how I use the LiDAR scanner in my workflow. It's quite important and I have done this uh, for years and I found that it's quite accurate and I never have to do the rework, especially for the prefabrication and it entirely replaced my total station. Okay, uh, thanks you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.